G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and for today's video we're taking you through the SSJS HTTP GET function allowing you to call an endpoint and then return back a response into your server-side JavaScript code in Marketing Cloud. The HTTP GET function is one of the most common functions that I use in server-side JavaScript and Enscript. And the reason is because I often have to get data from a third-party endpoint or even from a REST API in Marketing Cloud. And the reason is because often there is data stored at that location that you need for the purpose of personalization or sending to your customers. That could be things like returning a voucher code for a customer who clicks through to a landing page. It could be returning back an exchange rate before you send an email to get the correct conversion between dollars. It could also be things like returning back the weather conditions based on a customer's postcode or state code to give them the current weather forecast for their area. Either way, there's lots of great reasons to use the HTTP GET functions. So let's step through how it works. In server-side JavaScript, just like in script, we have a very, very similar function set. The ability to call a destination URL with some content and text type, providing some headers and header values as well. You can see here from the example, it's very similar to the script code indeed. Now one thing to be aware of is once again, this code set is inside the server-side JavaScript core library set. Click on the HTTP function header here, it tells us we do have to use the platform load core. So when we test this out, we have to make sure we add this code, uh, this library set, before we use our code. So let's now jump in to our get function and try it out in Marketing Cloud with one of my old favorite API endpoints, the ICANN has dad joke endpoint. So when I'm teaching users how to use HTTP get and post, I love to use this API. It's the ICANN has dad joke API. It allows you to call it and return back text or JSON payloads with a dad joke contained within. So in my experience, it's a great endpoint to practice with. So let's start building this out by using our Marketing Cloud test bench. I've got my server-side JavaScript block ready to go. What I don't have though is our core function. So I'm going to jump in and get that platform load core, copy that and put that at the top of my server-side JavaScript. Now I can load in my code example for the HTTP GET. So I can use my get syntax here, or I can scroll down and use some of my example code. So here we have a great example which has multiple headers and values provided. I'm going to use this one because we can delete the headers that we don't need, but it also means they're pre-filled in case we have to use them. So we'll copy that code and jump back into our content block and paste it straight in. We don't need that server block or that server block, but here we go. So now we can specify the variables for our function. Now, if we jump back into our I can has dad joke, it shows us what we have to do. So we do have to call the URL point. So if I have a look at the documentation here, we want to capture what URL. Well, this is the endpoint here. It is this URL. It's the same one there as a get function. Good. We're using a fetch as a get. So we're going to take this URL and use that in our URL variable, just like that. Now we need some headers. So looking back at the documentation, we can provide some specific headers so we can make sure that the format comes back as we want. Now the accept header contains, there's the name for accept, contains the value of application JSON to return a JSON response. Now we like JSON response specifically in SSJS because we can use them to traverse and address values as we need, which makes things way easier. To do things in HTML or plain text, we have to use uh, regex or other ways to traverse that code. We get this big blob back, which is nowhere near as easy to use. So let's make sure we use the accept equals application JSON. So we'll take the accept value here from the header, go in and that's going to be our header name, accept. No second name for now, just the one for accept. And then for the other one that we want the value to be application JSON to return back a JSON payload. So make that our value for our name of accept. So now in our function, URL, the header name and header values, URL, header name, header values. Perfect. All the functions being returned, we can then get that response. Now I want to show you why the response is done this way. Because when you turn or when you use the HTTP GET function, you get back a full JSON response containing the status and some content. I'm just going to jump down and remove these functions or comment them out just for now. So I want to show you what the actual full payload looks like. So let's take this write function. Let's write the complete response. We can't use the response, so it's going to return a JSON object, so we have to stringify it. Now, lucky for us, we do have our core library loaded. 
So we can use our stringify function directly from our utilities, string and stringify. Of course, stringify means we can take our object and turn it into a string. So let's take stringify. We are going to stringify our response, just like that. Let's now have a look at what comes back from our dad joke API. I'll save that and go into my cloud page and press run. Here we are. So here is the full content that came back. So as you can see, it is actually a JSON object, but inside this object, there is some content. And in this content, we've kind of double stringified it. You can see these weird slashes. Those are used to show that they are to ignore those additional um, characters. So there's actually a string, the content variable returned in the JSON payload is actually a string. All right, good to know. We do have, of course, the content that was returned, the ID, the joke. My friend said to me, what runs at orange? I said, no, it doesn't. What runs at orange? Oh, okay, I get it. That's pretty bad. So let's now try again. This time, not we're not going to stringify the entire content. We're just going to address the content that gets returned. So back into our code now. Let's not stringify the whole response. Let's instead use exactly this right. So I'll copy this right function here and paste it in to just address the content that was returned. So we'll go save and refresh. Aha, here's our content string. As you can see, there's no slashes now. We haven't double stringified it. So now we have this content. Good, we do know it's a JSON object because we do have those curly brackets with the name value pairs. Name value, name value, good o. The joke is, what do you call a cow with two legs? Lean beef. Well, would lean, that's fair. Status code of 200 meaning it was accepted. Now, of course, all this is in the documentation, and so we can see it's exactly how it comes back. Beautiful. Now that we have a JSON payload, we can begin to address it. So, back into our code, rather than using the content, let's instead write out the three components of our JSON object. Let's not spit out the entire thing. Let's process the JSON object as JSON and then produce these three values by addressing them by the ID, the joke, and of course the status. And to do this, we currently have this JSON as a string. So we're gonna have to pass that JSON from a string to be back into a JSON object. So to do this, we're gonna have to use another little utility. Now, this one we can go down into our platform functions we can use our there is it string here it is here to pass json so pass json is a platform function pass json so we can use that to pass our string version of the json object back into an actual json object so now the response content is the object we want to try and get so let's go var json is equal to the json passing of the response content that stringified content piece. And now we should have an actual JSON object. Now, if we have a JSON object, we can address it. And so to address the object, we can look into the values of ID, joke, and status. So we should now be able to say, let's write json.id. We should be able to then also add a line break onto the end to make sure our page is nice and clean. We do the same thing now for the other items, which was joke and status so we should now get three lines with these three values being printed out well let's take a look we'll go save and then refresh here we go there's the joke id i saw my husband trip and fall while carrying a laundry basket full of ironed clothes i watched it all unfold <laughs> not bad and a 200 success code beautiful so we've just been able to use our HTTP get function in server-side JavaScript, providing the URL, the header name and variable and values to then query that endpoint, return back a JSON response. The content was a string. So we passed the string into a JSON object, got the JSON object, and then addressed the three parts of the joke that we wanted. We could of course now comment out the status and the ID. We don't need those. We just want more good jokes. Let's go save and then refresh for one more good joke. I considered building the patio by myself, but I didn't have the stones. All right. So as you can see, the HTTP get function in server-side JavaScript is fantastically easy to use and very efficient at retrieving content or information 
from a third party service, which you can then use on your cloud pages or in your SSJS automation scripts. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough on the SSJS HTTP GET function. That's helped you to learn how to use this function better. If you have, then please let me know in the comments below with a big thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.